Hello guys! Right now I am getting ready to water the pigs, so I thought maybe I would take you guys along with me. Some of you said you'd be interested in seeing what I do. So this is what I do, and I'm starting off with the pigs. They're the chickens. They're out and about enjoying the day. So I'm just going to walk up here. I'm actually going to fill the pig's wallow which I think that's what it's called, I think. But I also was reading the comments from yesterday's video and I wanted to say thank you to the person who pointed out that the pigs need shade because they don't like the sun. So this weekend or this weekend or sometime this week, we are actually going to build them like a little overhang so they can have some shade. So thank you to the person who commented that. Right now this water is super hot coming out of the hose, so I'm gonna let it run for a while. And again, I'm sorry about my camera skills. <laughs> Holding a camera and doing this is not the easiest. And this hose has a leak in it. So I'm getting wet, but that's okay. At least it's warm out. So there's the pig's wallow. I'm gonna fill that with mud. Um, there's their water. I'm gonna top that off just because I think my husband is actually, we're gonna dig like a hole for that to fit in because I think it's up too high for them and it's not very comfortable. And we're thinking about making the overhang right off of that wall right there. Put a few more posts in the ground and just build like a little roof so they have somewhere they can, we'll put their water and food in there so they can hang out during the day outside of their little hut or hutch or whatever that thing is called. So right now I'm just waiting for the hose water to run cold and then I will fill up this large mud hole. Yesterday they were in there and they totally loved it. They were rolling around in it. I've never actually seen pigs roll in the mud heard of it, never actually seen it until yesterday. So that was exciting to watch. We've been feeding them um, watermelon and some old lettuce, some apples that we had, bananas. And of course they get their pig feed as well. But yeah, this is what I'm doing. This is what I do, you guys. I know, it's time consuming. It's just what I do. Fill this up with water. It takes a little while. And they love eating the grass. Where we got the pigs, my husband said when he went to go pick them up, they were feeding them like, like all kinds of crazy, crazy food. Like, uh, I'm not feeding. They were feeding them. I mean, some people do this and it's absolutely normal, but I didn't feel it was normal that they were feeding pigs like sausage and pepperoni and stuff like that. I, I don't know, maybe I'm weird, but these pigs now are only gonna be eating like vegetation and their pig feed and you know, just like, I don't know, just vegetation and pig feed. I don't wanna feed them meat. Maybe that's weird, but I don't want to. But yeah, so this is me filling a mud hole. Exciting stuff, you guys. And trying to keep a conversation going by myself while doing so. It's real fun. And I do want to make clear that I do love my life. I do love this. I, it, it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like chores. It's just, it gets me outside. It gives me something to do, and I absolutely do love it. So, I do not take this life for granted whatsoever. I'm just going to continue filling this up and then I'll top off their water and then I'll throw some feed on the ground and then we'll check on the chickens. My son usually tends to the chickens um, so I'm sure he's already fed them today and he's at work right now but I'm sure he did it before he went to work. But if they need water, fresh water, we'll do that. 
And then I also need to clean my hummingbird feeders and refill those. I might as well show you all how I do that if you want to see. Again, you guys don't have to watch these videos if they're boring. I think that's enough water for now. We'll go ahead and top this off. This is pretty much already topped off. But, yeah, I think that's good. Alright, so that's the water. Now we'll come over here. Again, sorry about my camera skills. Try not to get splashed with water. We'll see how the chickens are doing. And their little coop. I might need the scoop. Hold on. <clears throat> the feed scoop. Yep. Okay. Now we'll go over here and check on the chickens. Here's a little chicky. We'll check the nesting. Oh, there's a hen in there probably getting ready to lay an egg. I don't see any in there. They have food up there. I guess we'll fill this bottom one here. Food. Let's get the scoop. Give them something to peck at. And there they come. There. All right, those are the chickens. And now the pigs. We have an electric fence for the pigs for right now, just until we get the fencing better, more, I guess, stable. So what I'm gonna do is unplug it for a second. Oh, there's little piggy. Can you see him? Here. There he is. He's sticking his little head out. Oh, it's actually a girl. There she is. She has a sister in there with her. We have two little girl pigs. And you're not supposed to name your livestock, so I've refrained from naming, naming them. Let's throw their food on the ground for right now. But there she is. I want to name them so bad, but my husband says I cannot name them because once you name them, you're in trouble. Because we are, well maybe you guys can see her wallow in the mud. Will she actually do it? Oh, and there's her sister. Oh, let me put this back. There's her sister. And there's her. I really want to name these pigs, guys, but I'm not gonna. We are gonna be selling them to the slaughterhouse, unfortunately, but that is life, and that is part of owning farm animals. So, yes. So I try not to get attached, but it's really hard because I do love animals. But there she is. And the lazy one. Hey, little girl. I'm not even going to talk to him. Try not to. We have a feed bucket for them, but again, I think it's right there. We're going to, once we build the overhang, um, we're going to put their feed and their water in that area. And they can eat from like an actual trough. But they've just been really eating the grass that's in here. So... They seem happy. We give them watermelon and zucchini and lettuce and they seem really happy. So there they are. So that's them. I'm going to go finish now with the other things. I'm going to go check on the bees. Make sure they have enough sugar syrup for the day. 
We feed them sugar syrup because it was a nook. They were like trying to establish a whole new thing. So we do provide them with sugar syrup until they stop taking it and then we'll, we'll stop providing it. But so far they're still taking it. It's right there in that little red and white container. We just fill that up with a two cups of sugar to one cup of water. Um, that's the ratio. It's like a really thick syrup. And uh, yeah, they take that and take it back to the hive and do what they do with it. So it's pretty exciting. The one thing I have learned with beekeeping is there are 20 different opinions for one thing. So I don't know if there's a wrong or right way to do things when it comes to beekeeping. I think it's more of just learning as you go. So that's what we're doing. But yeah. Those are the bees, they look good. They still have some sugar syrup left, so I'll leave that until it's empty, probably this evening, and then I'll come up here and grab it, fill it up, and then bring it out in the morning. But that is them. We do have some wildflowers that have started to bloom. Not very many, but a couple. So that's kind of exciting. But yeah, they have a lot of things over there. They have those white flower things, which I don't know what it is. And like I said yesterday, they have the poplar tree, or the tulip tree, that they really like. And yeah, so that was that. Now I guess we can go and turn off the hose. And then I will grab the hummingbird feeders, and then we'll go in the house and we'll make hummingbird, sir hummingbird syrup, or water, sugar water for the hummingbirds and I'll clean those up real quick and then we'll hang them back up. Actually I have to let them cool after I make it because I don't think they want hot sugar water. So here's a bird feeder I made. I made that a couple years ago. I had clematis planted around it and this it's called bindweed kind of took over. But I still have one little clematis flower that blooms. But yeah, the bindweed just kind of took it all over and strangled it out, I think. But there's a bird feeder I made. And there's a hydrangea that just, I don't know how it got there. I don't think we planted it there. It just appeared. So let's turn off the hose. Another thing I have to do is I have to weed the patio and we don't use we don't use Roundup on the patio just because of the dogs so what I do is I get the pressure washer and do it that way and that's a pool for the dogs when they're out here and it's hot we fill that up and they like to play in that so we gotta get the hummingbird feeders it's a lot of back and forth there wouldn't be very much back and forth if I just did things correctly the first time. Here's one hummingbird feeder. It still has nectar or sugar water in it, but it's been in there for a week, so I like to change it out. And then there's one over here by the kitchen window, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to reach without getting a chair, but we will try it. Yeah, that's not going to be... So let me get a chair. Hold on. All right. I got the second hummingbird feeder. I also planted some of these things. Now this is just stuff that I found around the yard. Um, we have a big Rosa Sharon bush up there and it always drops. If you've ever had a Rosa Sharon, you know that it multiplies like crazy. So this was just, I got one of these. I just pulled them out of the ground and put them in a bucket and I got two of them. So got that. I tried to root an arborvitae. I took a clipping of our arborvitae that's out front, clipped it. I got it to root, so now I'm just waiting for it to get good and strong. I planted some sunflowers. This was from a bird seed mix. I was bored one day and was like, hmm, let's see if we can do it. They're starting to grow. I also have some crimson um, red maple. I got one, two of these. The grass is really starting to take over this one. I just kind of pull out some of the grass. 
from around it. And this is a winter honeysuckle. Found that too growing in the in the bed up there. So I just pulled that out and replanted it. And then these here, this here is a butternut tree. And we don't have that many butternut trees around in Ohio. They're not as many as there used to be. And definitely not anywhere I live. So my uncle who lives in Pennsylvania, he actually mailed me some butternuts. And I actually got them to, I planted them, planted the butternuts and I ended up with three butternut trees. So pretty excited about that. When I was younger, it was a thing me and my grandfather would do is he had a butternut tree in his backyard and we would go back there when I was little and we would collect all the butternuts and we would crack them and we'd sit there and just eat them, just me and him. And it was super fun. This is my garage. <laughs> There's a big stop sign in my garage. And yeah, and the hose and all that good stuff. So let's uh, go in the house here without, okay, the kitchen. Now my kitchen is not, I guess, perfect, but hey, it's a kitchen. Ah, okay. All right, I have those set up. Here's the eggs that my son collected yesterday. Fun fact about eggs, if you didn't know, you can leave them on your counter for several weeks as long as you don't wash them because when the chicken lays them, there's actually a protective coating that seals it so nothing can enter the eggshell and make the egg, you know, bad. So we keep them on the counter for a little while. We'll eventually wash them and put them in the fridge, but they're perfectly fine to leave on the counter. All right, back to the bird feed, the hummingbird feeders. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disassemble these and then I'll show you how I clean them. So hold on. water. I'll get a stopper here. I don't know why we have so many dish rags in the sink right now, but we do. Okay. I get a stopper and then I will get some bleach. And I fill the sink up with some warm water. And then I put a little bit of bleach in the water and just let them rinse. <laughs> it's very important to make sure that your feeders don't get moldy and grow any type of bacteria because that can make the birds sick, little hummingbirds sick, and no one wants to make the hummingbirds sick. So I rinse them out real good. I soak them in a little bit of a very weak bleach water solution to try to kill any bacteria and mold, you know, all that stuff, so. You just want to make sure it's all nice and clean for the bird. Okay, now I'm going to get the bleach. This is what I do, you guys. I know, so fun. Like I said, I'm not a lot of bleach, just a little bit of bleach. You 
you don't really want to smell the bleach, because that means if you can smell the bleach, then that's too much bleach. When I worked in the hospital, that was the thing. It was like, I think the solution for cleaning with bleach was like a one to nine ratio. Like one part bleach, nine parts water. Um, and that was how we would clean the rooms, the hospital rooms, when we didn't have solution. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and make sure everything gets good and rinsed out. And then after I give these a good rinsing with water, then we'll make the sugar syrup. So, hold on and let me finish this up and then we will make the sugar syrup for the hummingbirds. Alright, now that they are all rinsed, we can go ahead and start assembling them back together. So, first we're going to see if we can put these back together. Okay, that was pretty easy. That goes on like that. Those are the tops. So we have to fill that with sugar water. So we'll go ahead and fill that back on. That's one. It's been done. Now this one. Let's see. Does this one go together? Oh, get in there. Not the easiest thing to put back together, but that's okay. They're actually stackable, and I don't. know why. Well, how do you fit back on? See, this gives me something to do. Now I get to figure out how to put this back together. It's really fun. I know it goes in here. Or maybe it goes on this one. Does it go in this one? Okay, I don't think it goes back in this one. Why is this so difficult? Okay, it definitely doesn't go back in that one, so. I'll put it back. We'll push this one back. Okay, that one definitely fits together nicely. Okay, now we get to figure out this one. Oh, or did I break it? No, it definitely didn't go, but I didn't break it either, so. Okay, why can't I figure this out? Oh wait, did I get it? Why aren't you staying in? There! We did it. No, we didn't. Oh my gosh! Okay, you guys, this is just horrible right now. This is kind of comical. I didn't have this much trouble last time. But then again, these are new, so... But I thought they were the same. Stay together. Will you even screw in? Okay, when it's screwed in, it stays together. It just doesn't want to stay together on its own. So, keep that part in mind while I'm filling it. Okay. That goes here. This goes there. Alright, now we will make the sugar water itself. So, I'm going to get a bowl. Got a bowl. I'm going to get a whisk. Got the whisk. We're going to get a measuring cup. We're going to measure out one cup of water. Actually, I don't even need the bowl. 
I use the bowl for the bees water because they get a lot. So I measured out one cup of hot water. Now, you will hear people say you need to boil the water, all that good stuff. I don't boil the water. I just use hot water so the sugar will dissolve. Is it bad? Maybe. Is it hurting my hummingbirds that come to my yard? It hasn't yet. So I'm sticking with just using the hot water. Now I will get the sugar. This is a big container of sugar, and that is because, well, the bees take a lot of sugar. And I will use one cup of sugar. So it's one cup water, one cup sugar for the hummingbirds, and then I will mix it up in the measuring cup. You just want to make sure it's dissolved. So you just stir it till it's dissolved. dissolved. So then we just take our hummingbird feeder and we're just going to pour it right in. And I can always make more because we're going to need more. So that's what I do. I don't have to fill it all the way up because I do change it regularly and they don't um, they don't get to it all anyway, so we'll go ahead and make another quick little batch here for that one, which won't take as much. So hot water, one cup water, and then one cup of sugar. see what's in my window so I'll show you guys what all that stuff is. I get bored a lot so I just play with plants and experiment things. So I'll, I'll explain what that is in my window seal here in a sec. If you're not interested you don't have to watch. <laughs> Make sure that's all mixed up. All the sugar is dissolved. We'll get this one. Just go ahead and pour this in. Okay. Now since we have a little bit left, oh crap. What is going on here? Oh my, what? Please don't let me spill syrupy water all over myself. Because that would not be cool. That would be horrible. Not horrible. I guess worse things have happened. But not something you really, I feel like, dealing with right now is cleaning up a sugar, a sugar syrup mess. I've decided I don't like this hummingbird feeder. Getting a new one. Okay. And then while we're at it, oh, that's okay. That'll be good. Rinse that out. Put these in the dishwasher real quick. That way, I don't have to do it later. Put the bleach back in the sink. All right, and this bowl is never used, but I'm weird, so I'll probably wash that. Put it in the dishwasher. Just because it was out. I know it's a weird thing I do. I don't. If a dish comes out and it just automatically becomes dirty. So, what we'll do is we'll let these cool off because remember we used hot water. I'll let those cool off for about an hour or two and then we'll put them back up. And now for the plants 
in the window seal. Here we have, hold on, let me see. Okay, here we have a honeysuckle um, clipping, and I saw this on TikTok. Yes, I watch TikTok. Don't ever download that app because it is addictive, and you spend way too much time just scrolling through pointless, meaningless videos. But every once in a while, you will find a good one, and I did. This guy on TikTok, he said that you can actually use cinnamon as, like, a rooting hormone. So I'm going to try it out. I took a clipping of a honeysuckle, and I dipped it in some cinnamon and plopped it in some dirt. I'm going to see if it grows some roots. Here is my loofah plant, and it's growing. I'm going to actually plant this outdoors here shortly. Here's another loofah plant that... It kind of broke, but it's still wanting to grow. So if it's still trying, I'm not giving up on it. And these right here, I was cleaning strawberries one day and I decided I was just going to take one of the tops off a strawberry and just plant it and see what happens. And lo and behold, little strawberry plants are starting to grow. Very fun. And then my son decided to put some maple leaves in a jar, which you can see not working and there's some more honeysuckle. I'm gonna see if I can get them to root in just water. That's usually how I root a lot of plants is just in water, but I thought I would try the cinnamon and this little spray bottle here is so I can mist these cute little window plants. And that's it. And the eggshell, my son put in there because he says it'll give nutrients to the soil. I believe it does, but I think it needs to be crushed up and like moved around, but Whatever. Let him do his thing. So that is what's in my window seal. And there's our hummingbird stuff cooling down. And that's about it, you guys. That is, that's it. That's what I did today. I have, of course, a lot more. I still have to oil down these iron skillets before I put them away. So that's all I cook on is iron skillets and stainless steel. I don't use any non-stick Teflon, nothing. It's all iron skillet and stainless steel. And uh, yeah, so what you have to do is you have to get these super, super hot till they're almost like till they are smoking. And then you get your oil. I use canola oil and uh, wipe them down real good. Let all that, because it's so hot, it'll just suck in all that oil and it makes it just as good, if not better, than a Teflon nonstick. I am an iron skillet person. I will always use iron skillet. I have two other big iron skillets in my oven it's where I store them and yeah so that's it you guys that's what I've done so far today just a small snippet of what I do and uh, yeah so that's it I do have another hummingbird feeder this is my absolute favorite one let me show you oh it's a nice view of the garbage can but this hummingbird feeder here I really really love it um, it's really old. It's made of glass, but the bottom, the bottom broke, and I don't know how to replace it. So I just save it because it's so pretty. I don't know. I'm weird. All right. Well, that's it, you guys. Again, there's the little chickens. Here's my yard, kind of, in just a, I guess, I don't know, full view. And that's it. So. That's gonna be it for today. Um, I still have a lot more to do. Maybe I'll pick up the camera. Maybe I won't, but yeah. So I'll talk to you guys, I guess, later. Bye.